We'll have the last startups on the Rise team, plus here on stage. Jonas Yelt, co-founder and CEO of the company, will present their mobile app product. Jonas. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. Uh, pleasure to be here. Um, really nice to be here. Um, and and um, uh, I, I must say the event has really hiked up from the previous year. It's, it's really amazing to see so many people here and everyone very happy about the event. So great to be here. Um, I'm going to spend 15 minutes with you guys. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we are doing uh, with Blast. But I also really want to kind of uh, tell you something new, something I really think you haven't thought about so far. And uh, the topic is the really big opportunity in the emerging internet economies. So I really think that the biggest mobile opportunity right now isn't in the iPhone, high-end Android market. That's, that's where everyone is. But there is also a really big market outside that. So let's have a look. Um, before we go there, uh, I could kind of give a little bit background on Blast. So we are one and a half years old, um, based in Helsinki. Uh, we have 20 people, uh, 22 people in Helsinki, 15 people in Southeast Asia. Um, we are funded by Ambient Sound Investments, so the uh, founding engineers of Skype, uh, Veturi Venture Accelerator, uh, part of the Vigo program, uh, a few quite well-known angels, uh, such as Pekka Vartian and one of the ex-Nokia SVPs, and one angel from Indonesia. And uh, yesterday we announced the angel investment from Steve Blank. So that's a pretty big thing for us. All right, so let's get started. So the opportunity we are after is this. So in four years, there's going to be 600 million new people connecting to the internet. And this, that's only in those five countries. Most of them will be mobile. So that, that's a really big market. It's 600 million. And currently, this is the experience that we are going to offer them. A tiny, cheap Chinese handset, maybe some Nokia devices as well, and a really small screen with a crappy internet browser on it. And, and at the moment, this is kind of the best thing we can do for them. This is, this is the exciting internet, first time internet experience that they should be using. And we just don't think that this is, this is the most interesting thing that we can do. What Blast wants to do is bring them a great user experience. Everything you can get on a smartphone and maybe even something more. So what Blast does is that we bring mobile apps to the next billion people. That's the whole mission and the idea behind the company. This is how people usually perceive the kind of mobile uh, market. So, Year 2010, 300 million smartphones shipped. Everyone is working in that space. Well, OK, in addition to that, there's 300 million devices that are really dumb voice-only devices. In between them, there's a 800 million devices per year market that are devices that connect to the internet. They have this uh, some kind of internet browser. and they can run something on the device. And this is the market that Blast is after. These, these are the kind of devices that we are mostly interested in at the moment. So big players there, of course, Nokia, but especially MediaTek, the Taiwanese semiconductor company, a fabulous semiconductor. And it's growing. It's not a declining market. It's just that the smartphone market is growing uh, quite a lot faster at the moment. So how we do it is that we actually don't run the application on this crappy device. As long as the device has a enough big screen, we can work with it. And the application actually runs on our cloud platform. So that's how we are able to bring a really good user experience. So 
as a consumer, what you need to do, uh, you basically download a free client. Uh, it's around 200K, really uh, easy to download, doesn't cost you anything. You start it up, and you immediately get access to all the applications that we have. You uh, try it out for a couple of days. After the couple of days of trial, you pay. And the options are daily, weekly, monthly. Very simple. Nothing else needed. It includes data. It includes everything that you need to use these applications. And that's really all the applications, all-inclusive package. And uh, for some applications, you can also purchase additional things like uh, new game levels or such things with the in-app purchase. OK, so now we have the users interested. The next thing we need is the developers. So this is something that is quite difficult to do. Uh, how to get the developers interested. So what we have done is that we have built an SDK. As a developer, you just go to developer.dust.plus.com. You download the SDK. It's free. Start developing. It's JavaScript. Very straightforward. If you can do HTML5 apps, you will get it in no time. It's very fast to uh, work on. You immediately see the results. And it will work on all the devices that we support. So when your application is ready, you publish it, and you, get, you start getting revenue every month based on the usage. So let's say uh, I buy one day of Blast. I use five applications. What happens is that the revenue will go to those five developers of the applications that I used. The more I use it, the more they get revenue. So it's kind of, you could say, Spotify, but for mobile apps. So how we take it to the market when we are talking about the next billion people is that first we go to the market, we build the developer ecosystem, we uh, distribute the client virally, word of mouth, and we uh, monetize with global uh, payment aggregators. After that, we approach the operators. Um, what the operators really do here is make it big. They educate the market. They, uh, they can give us big distribution. And for them, it's a very interesting case, because they are all the time looking how to make data revenue grow. But the fact is that they can only make it grow in the higher, uh, high-end segments, because the other devices, they can't, you can't really do anything interesting on them. So it's kind of, we see that they are uh, being very interested in what we do. So our first market is Indonesia. And, and that's a really interesting country. Um, how we ended up there was that we looked at the numbers. 240 million people, half of them under 30. Second biggest Facebook population after US. Second biggest Twitter population after US. So it's not that they don't get it. And it's not that they are kind of one cycle behind or something like that. It's just that they need different services. They need a different offering. They are using Facebook. They are very interested in Twitter. But they need to do it in either they are wealthy people or they need to go to web cafes. And what we have done there is that we built the developer ecosystem there without launching the product to consumers. Uh, so right now, we have six, over 600 developers in Indonesia, over 50 applications. That makes us, as far as I know, the most successful uh, open developer, mobile developer ecosystem in Indonesia, um, which is pretty amazing for a startup that hasn't launched a consumer product, by the way. Um, we're just launching with our first operator in November. Um, it's one of the big ones in Indonesia. And um, they are now preparing to really educate and kind of make the consumers understand the product and make it, take it to the big masses. Next, we'll go to Malaysia, Philippines, rest of the Southeast Asia, Latin America, Middle East, Africa. All these places are kind of very interesting for us. And that's what we'll uh, do in the next few years. Um, so next, I would like to spend a little bit of time on uh, kind of three myths. So when you go to Silicon Valley and you talk about something, something like this, you get two kind of people, the ones who get it or the ones who don't get it. And the ones who don't get it, usually, they haven't been anywhere near these markets. And the second thing is that they have these three wrong myths in their mind. So 
I would really like you to think about this and kind of think if you can change your pers perspective on these emerging markets. Because the reality is that they are really big opportunities for developers, for startups, for anyone working in the mobile space. So the first myth is that everyone will have an iPhone in a year, two years, five years, or maybe you change the iPhone to Android or something like that. But that's not true. Uh, these markets are extremely price sensitive, and there will be always a high-end offering and a low-end offering. What will happen is that phones will get smarter, and we want to be part of that. We want to make the phone smarter as fast as possible. But it's just not a question of simply putting more horsepower and having a cheaper price tag. If we're talking about smartphones, what makes them smart is the application ecosystem, the open developer ecosystem. And what we see happening now is that no one is actually fixing those issues. Low-end Android is very difficult to develop. Um, Low-end Android devices, they are old Android devices. They are, they are worse than uh, early Symbian devices. Um, what you see Nokia doing is exactly in this direction. They are trying to make even the cheap phones smarter. So I don't think that this is true. The second myth is that they are not willing to pay for content or applications. That's actually true. If you look, it from a, if you look at it from a kind of download model perspective. But if you look at what Indonesians, for example, or other people in Southeast Asia are doing, they are crazy about uh, BlackBerry, if they are wealthy enough to use it. They are crazy about services like MiG-33, which are kind of huge hits. But the catch is that they don't, they don't buy these services with the download model. What they would like to do is pay per day, per week, per month. And usually, they pay per day. So actually, even, even people who use BlackBerry in Indonesia, their most popular subscription is daily. So every day when you wake up, you think, oh, uh, am I going to need BBM today? And then they text, OK, let's take it for one day. And they do this 30 times a month. So that's pretty crazy. But if they want it, why not give it to them? OK, so the third and last myth is that they are one cycle behind us. And this is something I already touched. I don't think this is true. What we see in Indonesia is incredibly uh, talented developers. Incredi they, 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 kind of, they know all the newest things. Uh, they work really hard. Um, the operators are quite interested in new things. Um, and, and overall, if you think about the mobile, they are not going to just, when we move to iPhone 6, they will move to iPhone 3. It's not like that. It's that they will do something completely different. That's what they are doing. And the idea that I want to leave with you guys is that do you want to do something that enables them to use new things? Or are you going to miss the opportunity and let someone completely else uh, fill their needs? Um, so. This was uh, what, I would, what I wanted to share with you today. Um, we are hiring like crazy. So if you are talented about um, mobile applications, um, doing pretty impressive cloud stuff um, about marketing, these kind of things, be sure to check out our website about uh, different jobs that we have at the moment. All right, thanks.